Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so glad to be here. Thank you, County Executive Also Brooks and Superintendent Howe, amongst everyone else of being here. It is very, very much a pleasure to stand before you here as the principal of Drew from a middle school. To lead a school that is built in the 21st century is very exciting. At Drew Freeman, we will provide various opportunities for our scholars. They can dabble a little bit in our performing arts classes, such as our arts, um, drama, dance, our digital art classes. We also have a growing AVID program that will help guide our scholars down the, to really have the best path for them for their career interests. We also are adopting a new autism program that we will definitely provide the necessary skills to ensure success in their future. Learning and enriching our scholars is not the only thing that we do here at Drew Freeman Middle School. We like to hone in on our social emotional learning for our scholars and with the collaboration spaces that we have here in this new building it's going to allow us to do just that in an intimate setting. We're not just going to focus on the social and emotional learning, but we also want to make sure that our families are truly our partners. We have definitely partnership with Ms. Jacobs. We also have 988 and our Boys and Girls Club, just to name a few of our partners we have here with Drew Freeman Middle School to ensure that our families, our scholars know that we are providing them with wraparound services. Understand that I am definitely committed to ensure that we are going to do the work that is necessary to elevate our scholars' mind to truly impact our futures. I definitely look forward to seeing our families and our scholars August 16th at our community opening day and our parents slash or, um, orientation, but also August 25th, where we have our student orientation so they can see exactly how the school day is going to go. Again, I thank you guys for coming out here to explore this new 21st century building, and I look forward to just starting new beginnings. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is yet another wonderful day um, in Prince George's County. We have such great news today and are just excited as everything to be here. Um, it's been really exciting for me to have the opportunity uh, to tour this beautiful new Drew Freeman Middle School. Principal Kyler, thank you so much for your leadership. Uh, and we are excited about all that will happen and all that will transpire in these walls under your leadership. So we thank you for, uh, for being here this morning. I want to also just thank the rest of our team from Prince George's County Public School System uh, who are here this morning, who have done the hard work of helping us prepare this building to receive our beautiful children. I see some of them uh, are here with us this morning. You just certainly want to thank everyone uh, for their work and for their leadership. We're also continuing to welcome to Prince George's County and to also say that we are so excited about the leadership of CEO Millard House, who is here this morning. We want to thank him uh, for his presence and, uh, and to say how excited we are to have him at the helm of our school system. Jason Washington, who oversees the Alternative Construction Finance Program here in Prince George's County uh, over our public school system, and want to just also thank representatives from uh, Fengate for joining us this morning. Um, I have as well a member, a number of our team from the County Executive's Office, our Chief of Staff and Deputy Chief of Staff and others who are here. Our communications uh, head is here as well and uh, in teams. I want to thank all of them. This is one of six schools under phase one of our groundbreaking alternative construction finance program, also known as ACF, opening during the 2023-2024 school year. Drew Freeman Middle School will be joined by Hyattsville Middle School in Hyattsville. Kenmore Middle School in Landover, Sonia Sotomayor Middle School in Adelphi, Walker Mill Middle School in Capitol Heights, and Colin Powell Ac Academy, uh, a K through 12 school in Fort Washington. Overall, these schools will serve 8,000 students. This day has been a long time coming. Prince Georgians have always pledged our commitment to our children. We know that their greatness grows in this county and we've shown our support in many ways. But when it came to our school buildings, for too long our words didn't match our results. For years, our children have had to attend school in some of the oldest schools in the state. When I took office as county executive, Prince George's County had an 
$1.5 billion school construction backlog. 40% of our school buildings have been built 60 years ago or more. I believe then, as I believe now, that delivering on our commitment to our children is a must, even if it takes innovative approaches to get there. That's why I went with our former Prince George's County Public School CEO, Dr. Monica Golson, to Annapolis in 2019 to push for the ACF program. I want to thank her once again for being a visionary leader, seeing and believing in what was possible for our school system. That's why we partnered as well with the county council and our legislative delegation to support this plan and want to make the case again how fortunate we were to be able to get into Annapolis in 2019 uh, before COVID-19 and that Prince George's County is the only school system in our state that has this plan. Thanks to our collective efforts, the Maryland General Assembly passed legislation in 2019 and then other pieces of this plan passed the county council and then the school board. The ACF program became the first of its kind uh, that the state and the nation had ever seen. Under normal school construction processes, it would take at least 12 years to build six new school buildings. But our children have waited long enough for our promises to be fulfilled. In fact, I can remember visiting the old Drew Freeman Middle School in 2020 to emphasize what the ACF program would mean to our children. Um, I saw her here a moment ago, um, the, the quintessential mayor of Suitland, Elsie Jacobs. I, I don't see her here at the moment, um, but I certainly want to thank her for standing with us that day to make the case that we will, would not wait any longer to address the need that our kids had. We stood in the cafeteria. It was crumbling and the building was deteriorating. The urgency of providing new school buildings for our children was made clear. That day, I promised that we would push through and get this done for them. We had to push through because getting to this day took a lot of hard work. Even in the face of obstacles like a global pandemic, we continued on and broke ground on the ACF program schools in the summer of 2021. And today, less than three years later, I'm proud to be standing in the cafeteria of Drew Freeman Middle School once again. This time, I'm standing in a new state-of-the-art facility to say that we got it done. We did what we said we would do. Breaking ground on 10 new schools overall in the past three years is an amazing feat, one that we are very proud of. And it's unheard of to complete construction on our six ACF school buildings in such a short time frame, just two years. It's proof that our ACF program is not only innovative, but it's also effective. It works. And we're especially proud that it works in a way that creates generational wealth in the process by supporting our local and minority owned businesses and our local unions. In fact, 32.5% of the funding went to minority business enterprises, exceeding our 30% MBE requirement. And the two largest contracts for the first phase of this program went to union companies, providing numerous employment opportunities for local union workers. And we're proud that Drew Freeman Middle School and the other ACF program schools are equipped with features like science, technology, engineering, art and math labs, smart boards in every classroom, state-of-the-art dance, choral, orchestra, drama, and band rooms, multi-purpose fields, and much more. Our children are receiving what we promised them, school buildings worthy of their dignity and a learning environment that will help them realize their potential. But we look forward knowing that there's still much more work to be done. We have some, we still have some of the oldest school buildings in the state, and we need to continue to address this issue with urgency. That's why we're excited to build even more new schools through phase two of the ACF program where we plan to deliver eight new schools. Our children are resilient and capable, but they shouldn't have to keep waiting for modernized facilities. This is an issue that we must continue to address, and these six new schools are proof that we can do it. That's why I'm excited about today and what it means for our children and for this county. I'm excited to celebrate our ability to take on long-standing challenges and get hard things done to support our children, families, teachers, and staff. Thank you, and now I'll turn this program over to CEO House, who will also have comments. Thank you.
Well, good afternoon. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm Millard House, the superintendent of the Prince George's County Public Schools, and I think we have to, first of all, thank our, our county executive, uh, Angela Alsobrook, for your leadership and, uh, and really leading the way in terms of innovation and focus on our community and our students. And uh, also uh, pay homage to, to Monica Golson as well for her leadership in pushing forward uh, with this uh, incredible uh, opportunity to really ensure that our students have the best learning environments for them po uh, as possible. Uh, she mentioned, uh, County Executive mentioned individuals like Elsie uh, Jacobs, uh, who's the president of the Sudlin Action Team, who really was a person that uh, helped to stand in the gap to ensure that the progress was not slowed. Now, as many of you know and are aware, Prince George's County uh, public school system is the 20th largest school system in the nation. A lot of people forget that fact, and quite frankly, the second largest school system in Maryland. And 50% um, of our facilities are 50 years old or older. And I think that's extremely important for us to pay attention to because uh, I've had a chance to be a superintendent or executive staff member in five different school districts in my 28 years in this work. And when I pulled up to this facility uh, to really take a close look at what was happening, this facility, whether it was in Bel Air, California, whether it was in Prince George's County, uh, Maryland, fits the bill of ensuring that kids have the best of the best. And that excites me. Uh, what excites me even more is that knowing that we'll be moving forward with even more opportunities to do this over the course of the next few years. Now, as you know, the former Drew Freeman Middle School building had truly long-lived and outlived its usefulness. And I'm extremely excited to see how students and families will react to this new facility on the first day of school, just a few, three or four weeks away on the 28th of August. This building uh, should be, quite frankly, a standard for every school in Prince George's County. And I'm extremely grateful for the support, as I indicated earlier, of our incredible county executive, also Brooke. The county council, state legislators, our board of education, Prince George's uh, County education and community partners were ex extremely instrumental and supportive as well. Our students cannot afford to wait uh, for fully modernized buildings as, as the traditional method of delivering facilities as we know it. The learning costs and opportunity costs are not replaceable and, uh, and it cannot, cannot be calculated in terms of what our students need and what they deserve. This program is truly a model for other states across the country and school districts uh, to really take a close look at what the delivery method could be and can be and should be uh, for school systems. Right now, we are leaders and we are innovators and we're truly standing on the forefront of what the future could look like. Prince George's County is showing the school districts across the nation truly a path forward in how school construction and collaboration can look. And as superintendent of this school district, I'm excited to, uh, to be able to usher in a, a new era with the past uh, in, in comparison to the past. So with that being said, I'm not sure who, who else is up on the, the, uh, um, the microphone, but I'm going to pass it to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandi Rogers McDonald. I am the project executive with uh, Prince George's County Community Education Partners. I work for Fingate Asset Management. I am a project director for Fingate Asset Management. And I'd like to say good afternoon, not only to Ms. Also Brooks, to Angela, to Mr. Milha to Mr. House, and also to, to uh, our counterparts here from Prince George's County Public Schools. What I want to say more than anything, and of course nobody told me that I had to speak this afternoon, but that's okay, because we're gonna get up here and do what we need to do. But I do wanna say thank you. We are so incredibly thankful for Jason Washington, who is director of the infrastructure office for PGCPS. Jason, thank you for allowing us to be the first to actually do this. Our team is incredibly proud, and just so everyone knows, our team actually consists of Fingate Asset Management, Gilbane Development Company, who is actually local here, Gilbane Building Company, and my, my partner in crime, and is in the back, my, Mr. Michael Ricketts, who is the director for Gilbane Building Company, who is responsible for building these buildings, as well as Honeywell Building Solutions. 
We are incredibly thankful for, again, having been the first to actually do this. And we are so proud to see that these state-of-the-art schools will be here now to serve 8,000 students and to be sure that these students have a high-end education and make sure that they have everything that they need in order to be successful in moving forward. So that, that would be it for all that I have to say this afternoon. But thank you again to each and every one of you for allowing us to lead this project and to basically make sure that this came to fruition. Thank you so much. But, there, you know, is this the answer to the critics of the P3 program, the you know, project labor agreement, uh, battle, and all of that? This is absolutely uh, an answer to any critic. I don't know who could criticize building schools for children. It is what is needed, it's what our community desires, it is what our children deserve. Um, now, there are details. Um, and in the details, we've, we've worked on the details. We've been as inclusive as we could. We've had community, broad community input and support. Uh, we have also included unions. We have made sure that, uh, and Jason can answer some, more, some of the more specific kind of charges we've seen um, regarding this, but the end result is we have an eight and a half billion dollar backlog um, in building schools. And what we were not going to do is to continue to cough, hesitate, make excuses, complain, point fingers. We're going to build schools for children that are reflective of their dignity and what we feel about them. I think this is a great example of what our kids deserve and the adults need to figure out the details, which is what we have worked to do. Um, but at the end of the day, what is most important at the end of any day is that we deliver for our children and we are going to build these kinds of schools for our kids so they don't learn in places that are deteriorating, that are 50 and 60 years old, the schools that, that build schools that they can, can actually feel good about. It's important from uh, from a confidence standpoint that a, a child has the opportunity to walk into a facility that they're proud of. Um, I, I think you have to think about it from the standpoint of uh, a student and, and, and even their home environment. Um, I think there's research even out there that explains, you know, what these kind of opportunities mean for students in their learning. So it means everything. And, uh, and we're looking forward to these students on the 28th of August walking in this building, feeling proud uh, about their school, feeling proud about who they are and the learning opportunities they will have inside of the walls of this beautiful facility. So we'll be, we'll be delivering, delivering the 90-day plan to the community. Uh, of course, that'll be a 90-day plan that will kick off with the start of the school year. Uh, so within the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll be shooting it your way into the community as well. What have you learned about school systems that you started just a very brief time ago? I think, you know, that, that's a part of what the 90-day plan is, is about. But what we do know is that middle school is, uh, is an area that uh, has to be a, a focal point. Uh, as we think about what's happening here with, uh, with this group of, of middle schools and uh, knowing that uh, six brand new middle schools will, will, will usher in the, the hundreds of students over the course of time, uh, those middle school scores along with the strategy and focus that will be kicking off. Uh, just this past weekend, uh, we had the opportunity to bring all principals together in our uh, SLI annual uh, conference to, to really focus on exactly what it is that we know uh, that has to improve. Uh, so uh, middle school literacy, middle school math is a, a big focus, but uh, we're excited about that. That'll be a part of our listening and learning tour. And uh, what I also have learned about this community is it's an incredible place to be. Uh, we want to make PG, Prince George's County, the place to be. And we want to make certain that our families agree that when it's that choice and comes down to that choice to ensure that they choose where they want to send their students, we want them to come to the Prince George's County Public Schools. That, that number is decreasing uh, over the course of time. Uh, it's been interesting. Just this past week, I had the opportunity to be a part of 
uh, the Biden and Harris administration delivered on a apprenticeship program that uh, my former school district, we were the first in the country to, to do so. Uh, we're definitely uh, looking to uh, ensure that we provide more and more individuals that would like to learn through the app apprenticeship method, uh, more of a grow your own type of uh, opportunity. Uh, what we are seeing is the numbers uh, going down. So at the start of the school year or the start of the summer, uh, I can't remember the exact numbers, but uh, those numbers are decreasing every week uh, as we hire more and more teachers. So we'll keep plugging away uh, to ensure that we have as many highly qualified teachers in front of students on the first day of school. Absolutely. So it was it was a very thoughtful process in terms of design uh, in reference to all six of these facilities, uh, everything from individual classrooms to entryways to uh, everything was thought of uh, from uh, from how students enter the building to how adults uh, who are not a part of the school personnel uh, sign in uh, check into this building as well. Now, when we talk about security uh, enhancements, as you all know, uh, the Prince George's County Public Schools uh, made the decision to move forward with, uh, with some different security enhancements, and that's going to be a phase-in approach. Uh, we've listened to the community, the feedback, and what we're going to do is start specifically with our high schools. Uh, not all high schools, but we will be starting with a group of high schools in terms of the security enhancements. Uh, we talked also about clear backpacks, and that will be a high school piece as well. Uh, so it won't be a full phase in approach for the entire school district, uh, but we're focusing specifically on high schools. Our hope is to work with community partners, our foundation, to be able to provide as many of our high school students with that clear backpack uh, for the first day of school. What's important is that they're in school and we're doing our best to work with partners again to ensure that they have what they need to be in the safe environment that we want them to be in. So uh, again, the phase in approach is, is just ensuring that we have what we need on the table uh, to move forward. Uh, what we know now is that there there will be a group of high schools that we will have the the necessary equipment to uh, to move forward. And our goal is to ensure that from uh, from a backpack standpoint that we have as many. I don't want to go as far in saying all, but as many of our high schoolers outfitted with a clear backpack as possible. Yeah, there is there's nothing more precious than the lives of our children, teachers, um, administrators, and other staff in these buildings. That is the most solemn obligation we have every single day as people enter these buildings is to ensure that they can do so safely. Um, and so we really have spared no amount of thought. Uh, we will spare no resource to make sure that when our children and all of the staff and others who come into our buildings, uh, that they will feel safe here. And it is unfortunate that not only our school system, but we're finding that we're in line with other school systems across the region and across the country who are making similar um, adjustments to the ones that we're making. It is a reality that we're living in now is that throughout the country, um, this is an issue at the top of mind of people who are making decisions for our kids. And so we want to make sure um, that we have made those decisions as well. Uh, we have great confidence in CEO House and our school board who are working in concert to make sure that we make the right and make very measured sorts of choices. But security is number one. Um, teaching and learning will happen in all of these buildings, but we know it cannot happen in a place where people are unsafe. And we will not have uh, environments that are unsafe for our kids. Jason, you want to share a little bit about kind of the design, and, and you hit the nail on the head. The design in all six of the facilities was to move forward with a gen gender neutral 
uh, focus, and um, and it's if you had the opportunity to see what that looks like, uh, it's a very safe uh, environment to ensure that the privacy uh, for each student uh, that walks in one of our restrooms. Again, a big portion of this is, is, is about uh, the overall security. Uh, that's no different uh, in our restrooms, and uh, we're very excited about ensuring that we provide a, uh, a kind of facility that meets the needs of the 21st century learner and, uh, and students that we have on a daily basis. And, and I will simply add also dignity. Uh, of ensuring that um, all students are able to utilize uh, the the resources here um, um, with without any caveat without any carve out uh, what we want to make sure is that students can solely focus on learning and being here and not worried about stigma or anything else and so what you've seen and how we've approached it uh, really was not to be forced to do it but feel like this is the the, the necessary route in terms of fully inclusive environments that our students can totally come in and focus on why they're here, uh, which is to learn. And so um, there are uh, gang and gendered bathrooms in community spaces. Um, as we welcome the community in, um, you'll see those down there. But on each wing, they are gender neutral. Um, and they're set up in a way uh, to provide the respect and the security and the privacy of each student while also ensuring the safety of, of, the, of the campus and with, with teachers having the opportunity to observe from a distance uh, and um, also to just, as I said, just focus on the dignity and respect of the students that are there. So I think you hit the nail on the head. It's it's about this equipment is being uh, is being shipped in from uh, from out of the country. Uh, so we're starting off with uh, an equity approach where we're looking at uh, different areas of our of our county. Uh, so we're not going to one particular area in the community or one particular area in the county. We're focusing on four or five different uh, areas in the county. Uh, so we'll be getting information out. We actually just made some of these modifications this morning uh, in terms of our security enhancement plan. Uh, so uh, we will uh, ensure that our, our media and communications department gets you the specific details on the number of schools, which specific schools will get started uh, with this win. What we can tell you, and, and Jason can go into detail, is that, uh, again, it was a very thoughtful approach in terms of design uh, to allow for um, any potential intruder on one of our campuses to have kind of a, uh, a second layer of protection for our students and for each classroom. So uh, teachers have the ability uh, to ensure that their specific classroom is, is on lockdown. Uh, we have the ability, uh, exterior in terms of our doors, to, to do the same thing uh, when we're coming in the building. So there's a couple different layers of protection uh, as our students uh, come into the building and as they go into the classrooms as well, which is just smart and is just what, uh, from a design standpoint, as a parent, uh, as a community member, as an administrator, a teacher, staff member, it's just the right thing to do. We have precious cargo in these buildings, uh, and we want to make, sure, make certain that we keep them safe. So from a security standpoint, we would prefer not to get into too much detail uh, in reference to what that looks like. Uh, but what I can say is that it's, it's smart, uh, smart security technology uh, that allows for us to do the right thing in the right time frame that we have a situation that, warrant, that it warrants. Jason. Um, Blueprint schools uh, program phase two will be eight schools, uh, six elementary, two uh, K-8 um, academies, 
uh, stretched out north to south uh, across the county. Uh, there, um, each of the schools will have uh, pre-K classrooms as well. Um, as we go forward, all elementary schools and our K-8s will have uh, um, to prepare for current uh, and the blueprint schools um, roll out across the state. Uh, we'll be adding additional uh, seats for pre-K. Um, uh, the, the, the numbers, uh, due to the support that the county executive mentioned before, uh, through her office and the, the, the county, uh, we were able to get dedicated state funding uh, for phase two. Uh, that will help supplement to ensure that we can move forward as quickly as possible. Right now, we're planning to close uh, phase two by next uh, June. 2024, uh, groundbreaking uh, soon thereafter, and to start delivering schools as soon as 2026. Um, all eight schools will be delivered um, by 2028, um, and so it's a fairly aggressive uh, program uh, to meet um, the, the, the call to action that we've received from our leadership, is that we need to move as quickly as, as we can uh, to get our students into uh, worthy buildings as soon as possible. Uh, yes, it would be uh, the same setup as before. Uh, it would uh, this time with additional contribution from the state, uh, with the same right now 30-year uh, uh, services agreement tied to it. So it would be a, a second phase of the Blueprint Schools program. So uh, it all starts with the um, educational facilities master plan, uh, which is really our, um, I guess, blueprint of looking at all of the school's assets. Um, there are over 200 school buildings uh, and facilities that we operate, and they are set up in cycles. So what the uh, P3 um, um, will handle once phase two is done, we will have addressed all of the cycle one schools um, that uh, we have identified. And that's what really uh, the public-private partnership is focused on, a jolt to clear, to basically accelerate addressing cycle one, cycle, uh, cycle two through four schools. Um, and so that is step one. Uh, but the, uh, the P3 is but one stool. It's, a, it's, it's really a three legs of a stool process. So there are also uh, what are known as stage renovations. Uh, those are specifically funded locally. And those are where we have schools that have good bones, um, but they just basically need uh, a facelift. Uh, but it's, it's still structurally sound, and that's uh, one uh, route. And then the final route is the, tr the traditional CIP route, uh, which is where we match up local funds with state funds. Um, and so right behind us here at Suitland High School, that will be utilizing uh, the traditional uh, capital improvement plan or CIP program. And so that is how we are really attacking and addressing uh, deferred maintenance and the conditions of our schools. Um, the public-private partnership is not the panacea. This is not going to wipe clean all of the, uh, the noted deferred maintenance that exists. Uh, what is meant to do is allow us to reorder our assets and to be very thoughtful about where we make our investments. Uh, and we really look at the P3 as a budgetary tool. We know how much each year we have to dedicate for this that allows us to focus our efforts on other schools. Yes. Yes. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. No. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Always good to see you.